Our fourth and hopefully final Stanley Cup playoff master set drop has been released in Hockey Ultimate Team, highlighted by the 96 overall, Bobby Orr. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today's video, we are going to break down the final release of the Stanley Cup event, talk about all the new master set player items, as well as the objectives and other free cards you can earn, and top it all off with a really concerning trend when it comes to the content that they release in NHL 24. Let's get into it. So here is the 96 Bobby Orr, 6'198". He comes with two-way defensive and offensive defensemen, as well as checking agile dangler shooting and defensive boost. Now his skating stats are all maxed out. If you remember back to the Gallery of Greats event when Bobby Orr was announced as probably one of the most hype legends we've ever had in Hockey Ultimate Team being added into the game, he was an extremely effective card back then. His skating was a big separator at the time. However, now a lot of other cards Cards have high 90 skating. That being said, he is going to be one of the best and fastest skaters. He's got Gold Heat Seeker, which has proven to be very effective in NHL 24. Relentless is completely useless, but makes total sense for Bobby Orr. Shutdown is going to really give this card the ability to actually do some things defensively. Shutdown has proven to be one of the better defensive abilities in NHL 24. Elite Edges definitely has its usefulness, as does Wheels. Now, with defensive defensemen or two-way defensemen, you can get that defensive awareness up to almost max combine that with defensive boost but you probably want to rock checking boost for that boost to body checking to get that a little bit higher as that's really lacking especially considering he's not overly big this is still going to be a very fun card to use and in my opinion we rarely get these new crazy icons added into nhl if they're not signed into the alumni association or give their player rights to ea they're not able to be in the game. And while there is a ton of players that aren't, like Pavel Bure, Pavel Datsuk, for example, right now, having Bobby Orr in the game is a big plus, and I hope that next year he's one of those ultimate icons if they choose to go that route again. Next up, we've got a fan favorite, the 96 Peter Forsberg, 61205. Always a fun card to get released to us. It's got playmaking power and sniper forward, as well as checking, playmaking, agile dangler, and shooting boost. When it comes to abilities, he's got some great ones. Gold make it snappy, has proven to be one of the best offensive abilities this year. Truculence got a massive boost. Really fun. If you are someone that likes to hit a lot, it also wipes out players' stamina if you are able to hit them. Puck on a string, I'd only recommend for players that focus on World of Chell. Elite Edges is useful, as is Unstoppable Force. At 97 skating across the board, you can get his shot to basically max if you combine shooting boost and sniper forward. He's got max out body checking, hand stats, 99 face-offs. All in all, a great card. But I do want to point out, one of the biggest issues with content this year is that they really like to release a lot of icons that are already receiving power-ups every month. When you consider the 97 Peter Forsberg that just got his latest tier, well, he comes with accelerator boost as well as speed boost, meaning that he can get to 97 speed, same as the 96 master set player from this event, 96 acceleration. He does have truculence as well as elite edges. No make it snappy, but gold unstoppable force. 97 face-offs, which can be boosted, max hand stats, and really good body checking. He also comes with the caveat that if you are still going to play the game on July 1st, he's going to get 98 overall, where almost everything is going to be maxed out. Now, his 97 would cost you 38 power up collectibles, which is a significant amount over the 29 that it would be to upgrade from his 86 from this event all the way up to his 96. But still, if you're going to spend this much and you're a really big Peter Forsberg fan, I'd much rather go with his power up icon, knowing that eventually he'll get to 99 if you are still going to play the game throughout the summer. It just doesn't make much sense and they've done that a ton in my opinion if they are going to keep the same format in terms of the power of icons the master set players what i'd love to see in the future games is if you really want to do a peter forsberg card and recognize him for his playoff success in this event give him an event card that's 96 overall not a master set player because these are so few and far between that as a player base we get really excited every friday to see what the new master set players are and when they're cards that you could just get better versions of that will continue to be better it just really lowers the excitement overall and i've seen that from the community all the way through again let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on that next up i apologize buffalo saber fans but we've got the dallas stars brett hall 511 205 he comes with playmaking two-way and sniper forward as well as defensive checking playmaking agile dangler boost brett hall cards are so fun 
at the beginning of the year because he's one of the only cards that has like maxed out shooting almost immediately in the year. His skating is abysmal, but skating in general is much lower and you can just flick up because goaltender attributes aren't anywhere near what Brett Hull's shot is. However, his abilities are a little bit lacking. Crease Crasher did just get a pretty big buff, but it is very situational. Magnetic is a pure world of Chell ability. The only time that you are really going to notice this is if your player has extremely low offensive awareness. And we're in June, he's got 99 offensive awareness. Shrug it off helps smaller players. One team makes sense. And Unstoppable Force is going to help him hold on to the puck a little bit. Now, without any skating increases, he's got 96 speed, excel, 97 agility. We're at the stage now where everything is essentially high enough. But if you were going to invest so much in a card, you kind of want a card that's going to have max skating, in my opinion. He's got 99 pretty much everything else except body checking and he is a pure winger definitely more of a theme team card in my opinion at this stage of the game oh and by the way you could just make his power icon like peter forsberg he's got enforcer forward as well as speed boost to get his skating up to 96 and you can go accelerator boost to get his acceleration up to 95 again if you're a fan of the player just go with the power up icon because you know that it is going to be a 99 again let me know what you think but i've always thought that master set player items should just receive the plus one bump that the power up icons and the X Factors see. For example, way back at the beginning of the year, this feels like years ago at this point, this Evgeny Kuznetsov card at launch was fantastic. One of the best cards in the game for that first month. Players got to use it, really enjoyed it. And then by December, you essentially had to move on because your players just, you're continually chasing the carrot. I'm assuming this might impact business. I don't know. But if every month you just gave them a plus one, these cards will remain relevant the whole year. Every event would be like, man, this card might not be great right now but i really enjoy using him and he's just going to be able to continue to keep up with the overalls it would just make it really fun i think the only downfall to that is if they have a really lame duck event that no one enjoys we've had happen quite often you could just go back make the old master set players and just upgrade them but maybe that forces them to make an absolute banger event every single time and then lastly we've got the con smythe winner in last year's stanley cup champion vegas golden knights jonathan marches so at 5 9 183 obviously going to be very difficult if you are someone that plays in high ranked online play the smaller players just tend to struggle a little bit more sniper two-way and playmaking forward as well as defensive checking playmaking and shooting boost 99 skating across the board which is great gold shrug it off i can appreciate them doing this to try and help mitigate the size don't hate the selection either giving the most recent cons my trophy winner a card during the stanley cup playoff event makes total sense no contest tape to tape elite edges and snipe i gotta be honest i haven't noticed the snipe superstar ability since the buff as much as i thought thought I would, but all things considered, this is probably one of the worst ability combos you could have on someone who's this small. So unless you are someone who is a fan of Jonathan March or so, you're making a theme team with the Lightning or the Golden Knights, for example, then absolutely you want to pull the trigger here, but he's just a pure winger. So obviously not going to be massively exciting for anyone that isn't a fan of Jonathan March or so. In terms of the new event cards that did come out, we've got the 94 Billy Smith. I don't know if I've ever seen someone ever in an online game use Billy Smith, even when he's got a high rated power up icon until EA figures out how to make small goaltenders viable. Unfortunately, Billy Smith is always going to be victimized here. Jerome Ginla gets a custom build playoff card. Always love seeing Jerome Ginla cards. One of my favorite players of all time. 6'1", 210. He's got sniper 2A and power forward, as well as checking agile dangler shooting and defensive boost. They really do not want to get to 99 skating. And it's crazy because it's like out of principle because 96 to 99 is very negligible, but I don't know if they're trying to create some sort of separation gap in the value of cards, but it's so close anyways. He's got Goldborn Leader, Unstoppable Force, Back at you, Truculence, and Snipe. So some fun abilities. 95 Speed Excel and Agility, a really good shot. Hand stats are at 95. Body checking's 99. And his face-offs are up at 90 as well. So you can play him on center if you needed to. Ah, uh, Death Taxes and a Timu Solani card every single month. He's one of the most popular players of all time, but they've really got to figure out a way to just not end up in a situation where you've got like 40 of the same player looking at you noah dobson so he's got playmaking two-way and sniper as well as speed boost agile dangler etc and playmaking forward they give the skating synergies to a dude with 99 speed excel and agility <laughs> 
All right, fair enough. He's got max shot, max hand stats. Body check is a little low. Pure winger. You know what you're getting with Timu Solani cards. He does have gold snipe. Again, let me know in the comments section if you found gold snipe to be good since the recent buff. Wheels and edges is great on the 99 skating. Ankle breaker and born leader you can probably avoid. It's Timu Solani. You know that he's good, but if you really like Timu Solani, you probably have his power up icon. And finally, we've got... Patrick Watt, 96. He's probably one of the better, smaller goaltenders. And now that's 6 too small, but in game. He has been usable at times, but it's usually because he has a really high rated card early on in the game. Again, unless you're a fan of Patrick Watt, not really much of a point in investing in this one. Okay, now we did get some new objectives for the week four Stanley Cup playoff events. And it is going to net you some free cards. Scoring three goals in any Rivals, Hut Champs, or Squad Battles game is going to net you the 86 Yvonne Cornwaye. Taking a look at his stats again always one of the fastest skaters when it comes to his cards he gets speed boost as well he's got 95 speed if you're brand new to the game this is actually a half decent card for you just because of the skating everything else is going to be a disaster in game for you if you play online but this i want to point out is another reason why the current power up icon format where they only have like 35 power up icons yvonne cornway is like on my mount rushmore of lower overall power up icons that always slap bring back one of the goats now after you get the 86 yvonne Corn YA. All you've got to do is take 65 shots with him. Again, in any mode, probably going to be rookie squad battles. And that will net you an 88 Ted Lindsay. If you've been playing the game for a while, you obviously know Ted Lindsay cards are usually pretty rough when it comes to their stats, but this one's got 95 speed, excel, and agility, much like Yvonne Cornway. If you are brand new to the game, at least he can keep up. Again, the rest of his attributes are going to be really rough. It's got born leader and back at you, but regardless, it's still an 88 overall card. The rest of the objective path is going to have you doing various things with those players, netting you more event collectibles. The event collectibles have much less of a value than the power-up collectibles, but it does cost you 15 to get one of the 86 is from this event. So since we are mercifully at the end of the event, if you want to go back and make any one of these cards, uh, that's the only way I'd recommend doing those objective pass and grinding that out because again, it does cost you 15 event collectibles, which isn't nothing. So if you can get this for free, definitely recommend doing that. Now into Hut Rush, all the way down at 600,000 points. We've got the 88 Brad Park that you can get, even if you're not going to use him, that is definitely going to be useful for trade-ins and Hut Rush has proven to be one of the quickest ways when they add in these cards because all you've got to do is the objectives against the cpu on rookie this can take you just under an hour and you can get another 88 as well as some other various packs along the way but definitely something i'd recommend and probably the most valuable thing out of the hut rush reward path is the 99 xp collectibles because we are about to get our quest to 99 choice pack but even i don't have the maxed out collectibles for that so Taking a look at that 88 Brad Park. Again, actually a half-decent skater for being 88 overall. Has gold seeing eye. Usable for anyone that is just starting the game. But again, for the most part, it's a free card you can get via Hut Rush that you can trade in for power-up collectibles. The 88 Ted Lindsay, as well as Brad Park, that'll net you eight power-up collectibles right there. Then you can go ahead and trade in Yvonne Cornway, along with two more 86 overall cards, and you will get an additional four. So 12 power-up collectibles for almost no cost is probably one of the better values currently in those objective paths. And we also got a 2019 blue stanley cup run moment path that will again give you some very very small rewards for your time needed and i am definitely going to be avoiding this one i don't need to live through that again all right then we need to discuss whatever this is in the store i saw a lot of heat on reddit in my discord if you're not in my discord by the way we've got 4,000 players that just grind hockey ultimate team talk hockey all day long so make sure you join it link is down below that couldn't help but point out the top Top line pack. At 650,000 coins or 9,000 points, you will get an 86 overall for every position clearly marketed towards the players that picked this game up via EA Play and have started to play Hockey Ultimate Team with the promise that, hey, you can get maybe an entire first line. Except when you consider the fact that 9,000 points is basically $100 Canadian and even not in our Monopoly money, it's still more money US than what you would pay for the game. On top of that, the probability is are absolutely piss and a continuing trend that has gone on for the last five years ea is absolutely terrified of anyone getting a tradable card the thing i want to bring up because this is definitely the nail in this point is that if you were to go back and look at prior years in the store there would be a much fewer selection of packs in the store as someone who plays this game for hours on end in a week even i don't understand all the convoluted mess that comes 
comes out in the 20 different packs that we have available. This just screams, like, confuse the consumer with a million options to try and get them to just buy stuff. And the bigger issue I have is that this year specifically, including in World of Chell when they added in the store, which I actually think is a good thing if you play World of Chell and you want some of the cosmetic items, go ahead, absolutely love that. I think that that's the model for almost every other game that's popular, like Fortnite, for example, as long as it doesn't touch in-game stuff. Ultimate Team modes obviously run sports until maybe NCAA. However, that being said, I don't know, maybe you weren't around when mobile gaming first took off, but I remember grinding the Simpsons game on my iPhone phone and it was like you'd play for an hour you'd get capped out and you'd be having a blast building different you know houses and buildings and getting new characters into your city but then it'd be like hey you want to speed things up go and buy this and you can speed things up and mobile dominated because of that you get people that have a problem with inability to just blow all of their money on a credit card in a video game because they don't want to wait. It's why I don't show a lot of packs in my videos. I'm someone that has seen enough ultimate team modes to get angry at this nonsense. And it's why I've been completely no money spent in a landscape where this is my job. And a lot of people followed me because they just wanted to see the best team possible every single video. Now, if you are someone who has no money issues and you don't have a lot of time, you're busy with work, things like that, and you supplement the amount of time that you have with buying a few packs, totally understand that. I will never shame anyone for that situation. It's very common. However, guys, especially if you are new to Hockey Ultimate Team because you got it via EA Play, I earned this team by just playing the game and showing you guys how to intelligently go through all of the events knowing that I'm gonna play the game for the whole year. You can go through and watch how I earn this team every year in my No Money Spent video series, but there's just no need if you are gonna spend five or more hours a week playing any Ultimate Team team game to actually go out and spend money afterwards. I hate seeing this. I don't even show packs with coins because I hate that nonsense. It just promotes everyone to go out and buy more and want to spend more. And I understand the addiction of it. Maybe it's just me being an old man now. Hey, you're embarrassing yourself, you geriatric but I hope that this egregious pack creates enough of a stir where they cut that nonsense out. Apologize for the negative ending, but thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.